Hi, uh, my name is Sarath and I'm a student of PGPM Batch of uh, 2022. I'll be speaking on the topic, India's rising fiscal deficit. Fiscal deficit in its easiest definition means the difference between what the government spends and what the, what the government earns as a percentage of GDP. India, amongst the leading economies, had the best performance with a positive growth of 3.3% in the January-March quarter of 2020, but the worst performance with a contraction of 23.9% in the April-June quarter of 2020. As a result, fiscal deficit for the financial year raised from the planned 3.5% to about 7% of the GDP, mostly on the back of lower tax collection and rise in spending due to the pandemic. Data from the Controller General of Accounts indicate that centers' gross tax revenues during the first four months of financial year 21 have contracted by 29.5%. Market borrowings, on the other hand, in order to help the population struggling due to COVID-19 were raised from 7.8 lakh crore rupees to 12 lakh crore rupees. So what is the problem of having a high fiscal deficit? One is the threat of international rating agency downgrading India's credit rating. SNP currently has India at triple B minus, its lowest investment grade rating with a stable outlook. This means more cost of borrowing from external sources. If the government tries to borrow more from the domestic market, which it has done this time around, it results in crowding out effect, meaning less credit available to the private players in the market. A 2003 paper, The Economic Effects of Long-Term Fiscal Discipline, written by William Gale, analyzing the situation in the US, concluded that if the budget, if the budget deficit increased by 1% of the GDP, the long-term interest rates go up by 50 to 100 basis points. This might not be entirely true in the Indian context. The US is currently running a record deficit uh, and enjoys a record low interest rates. There are a number of variables that react differently to different situations. The central bank also influences these variables. One way uh, the RBI tries to control, uh, RBI tries to help is to reduce repo rates. In February 20, RBI cut its repo rates from 5.15% to 4% to encourage banks to lend more to the private companies. In a country like India, high fiscal deficit also means lower savings and lower growth in the economy. To help expenditure, uh, to help keep expenditure in check, government tries to cut benefit payments to its employees and pension pensioners, resulting in lower consumption from these sections. It also raises taxes on petrol and uh, petrol and diesel, which is an easy way out uh, to boost tax collection, but can adversely affect, uh, can adversely affect inflation as the cost of goods sold increase uh, due to increase in the petrol and diesel prices. So what can the government do? The government must look at innovative ways to bring more people into the tax paying bracket. New avenues for tax collection, like making betting legal and levying taxes on the earnings can be thought of. It must pay attention to GST collection and make sure that the targets are met. Next, it must prioritize spending and look at strategic areas to spend which will give the maximum benefits. The government also has gone down the path of disinvestment and asset monetization, which will somewhat help in keeping the fiscal deficit in check. According to the government, the PSUs are the wealth of the nation and it wants to promote public ownership of these public sector enterprises. While, pu uh, while pursuing disinvestment through minority stake sales in listed uh, public, public sector enterprises, the government uh, will retail uh, majority shareholding, that is 51% of the shareholding, uh, and management control of the public sector undertakings. Uh, the government also uh, plans of uh, strategic disinvestment by way of uh, sale of substantial portion of government share, uh, share holding in identified uh, CPSEs up to 50% or more along with transfer of management control. But these are temporary measures and if not backed by simultaneous asset creation programs will result in what the late finance minister Jaitley said, uh, the government leaving a legacy of debt for the future generation. Thank you.